Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. I'm James, thanks for stopping by. We're talking Spider-Man today. If you're new on the channel, hit that subscribe button. Special shout out to all of our new subscribers. We're on our way to 4,000, so thank you very much. Today, we're talking Spider-Man, like I said, and I love me some web-slinging action. Thwip, thwip, thwip. From your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. You gotta, you gotta say, say I love you back. Dad, are you serious? I, I wanna, wanna hear it. it. I remember many, many moons ago writing a fan film script about Spider-Man. I had Spider-Man, Daredevil, Rhino, Wolverine. Everybody was in this thing that I wrote. And then within a week of writing this that I thought was going to be my big break in Hollywood, it was announced that Sam Raimi was going to direct a Spider-Man film. And I was on this website called SpiderManHype.com. And once that news hit, it changed. There was all of a sudden a countdown to the Spider-Man movie directed by Sam Raimi, who directed a movie called Dark Man and before that, Evil Dead. I had not seen Evil Dead at this point in my life. I was still young, old enough to have seen it, but also wise enough to know uh, my threshold for horror at that time. Dark Man was a movie I found very, very interesting it was different it was unique it was kind of cool it was a superhero motif but not quite superhero but still superhero and Liam Neeson was absolutely wonderful in it and when I heard it was Sam Raimi helming Spider-Man I said okay sure why not it wasn't the first name that jumped out at me as a possibility I remember before that James Cameron was rumored to be doing Spider-Man and I believe he dropped out because he said it takes him up to two years <laughs> to work on a movie two years imagine how many Avatar movies there would be <laughs> if those things only took two years he's a filmmaker who likes to take his time Enough said, but Sam Raimi obviously did it, and Spider-Man, and Spider-Man 2, and I would argue Spider-Man 3. They've become classics. They are film classics, and we obviously we saw Tobey Maguire's return in No Way Home, which was absolutely wonderful to see, along with Andrew Garfield and whatnot. And I've, I've, I'm on record, I've said this many times, I've liked every single Spider-Man movie we've ever gotten. I've had no qualms with any, I mean, I have had qualms, I should say that, but I've enjoyed all of them. I'm very easy to please when it comes to Spider-Man. Spider-Man, Batman, and other things like there's a few things that I just go in and I just I can enjoy it I can understand you know when people say negative nitpicks and negative and what doesn't work and what does work but for me I just have, I've just really enjoyed every spider-man that we've gotten but now that leads us into don't move the new Netflix film from producer Sam Raimi and the Hollywood reporter caught up with the directors of the film Adam Schindler and Brian Netto and they had a little discussion with them the interview obviously went into what other films are you talking about and whatnot and they go specifically into the Sam Raimi side of things and they say well if we're talking about Sam we gotta talk Darkman and Schindler is a massive Darkman fan so he would love to bring Darkman back to the forefront and remake a Darkman or a sequel to Darkman and I think that would be spectacular I think audiences deserve more Darkman frankly I think there was like a hundred million of them in the 90s but a modern not a modernized one but a, one made for modern audiences could work it could potentially be a great movie because the idea of Darkman was so great but beyond that, they go into Miles Morales. Mm, I love this burger, so delicious. Mm, one of the best burgers I've ever had. And Brian Netto would really love to do a My Miles Morales film because he has a biracial son and his wife is Puerto Rican. And I think this is the type of filmmaker you need to make a Miles Morales Spider-Man movie. Someone who I can identify with the character. Same with Sam Raimi identified with Spider-Man. He grew up with Spider-Man. You need somebody like that. Now Miles Morales hasn't been around long enough for filmmakers to have grown up with Miles Morales. Now, look, Miles Morales obviously was not my favorite <laughs> as a child because he didn't exist when I was a kid. But he's modern, and I think the two animated films that we've gotten, the Spider-Verse movies, have been absolutely phenomenal. He's a great, he is a great character. Whatever you think of why he exists and whatnot, Miles Morales is, is a wonderful character, and I think a great expansion of the Spider-Man mythos. I think he's phenomenal in his interactions with Peter Parker with Spider-Man. Now, if you do something and leave him at the side of the door, I don't know how that works out. But we also have a Sony-verse that is starving for a Spider-Man. We've heard rumors about Andrew Garfield, and he said, I don't think so. Tobey Maguire, I don't think, would touch that with a 10-foot pole. And Tom Holland's not coming in there anytime soon. And Venom, The Last Dance, really hit that point home when, when Venom says, I'm sick of no more multiverses. I'm sick of multiverses. They kind of shut the door on the Tom Holland in the Sony-verse. Now, whether Venom goes over to the MCU, whatever, that's another thing altogether. The Sony-verse needs a Spider-Man. And if it's not going to be Holland, Garfield, or Maguire, are you going to bring in another Spider-Man? Another Peter Parker Spider-Man, I should say? 
that seems like a lot and very redundant, especially when it will go head to head and toe to toe with Tom Holland's Spider-Man. You're gonna have conflicting Spider-Man. They're already dealing with this with DC, with the with the patents and Batman and Brave and the Bold Batman from James Gunn, right? Those two are gonna conflict. At some point, they might come to a head, and audiences are gonna either say, "Awesome, we get two Spider-Man movies," or they're gonna say, "Why are there two different Batman? I don't get it." Did they already recast Pattinson? Like, there's or why is Pattinson back? I thought there were, there's going to be confusion there because because even though people watching this might be obsessed with it like me and might know all the ins and outs and what's going on, a lot of people aren't that in tune with it, right? They see a movie trailer watching Monday Night Football and they're like, oh look at that, a new Batman movie, a new Spider-Man movie. Let's go see it, and they're just not as tuned into this stuff as we all are. To that end, do you conflict? Do you have conflicting Spider-Man going toe to toe with each other? Or do you bring in the Miles Morales Spider-Man in the Sony-verse? That also leaves fans like us to speculate, could Sony's Miles Morales appear in the MCU? And you know we would all be digging our heels into that topic for decades and decades to come. It's interesting that this Hollywood Reporter in interview came out with the directors talking about making a Miles Morales movie. They also mentioned how that wouldn't be anytime soon, probably further down the line. So they have a lot of time to plan on it. So it sounds like when the time comes, when Sony decides that they're going to pull the trigger on a Miles Morales film because we all know it's coming. Like at some point, Miles Morales is going to get his due in uh, in a film, it's in, in a live action film, I should say. Like it's, it's going to happen. It's bound to happen. Everybody knows. They know. They say they've got a lot of time to work on it. So you know that they're going to go in and have a pitch ready for Sony of their Miles Morales film. The one problem with this, not the problem, the one obstacle that you'd have is the, is the Spider-Verse movies. Those movies are so good. They're so beloved like they're not even old and they're already beloved they they probably should have won an oscar been like you know for best animated film they're that good both of them and then the third one's obviously coming so again now you're gonna have a miles morales that is going to inevitably be compared to your almost perfect spider-verse films how does that work if the live action isn't up to snuff with what we got in the animation that becomes a bit of a problem and that's gonna be a problem for Sony because then people are like why why would I go see another one or whatever when the animated stuff is so much better but also that's not a bad problem to have right like if your problem is that your that your movies are too good for another movie to live up to that's not a terrible terrible problem another cool aspect to all of this though is on a recent interview with uh, Christian Harloff on YouTube Renzi Feliz said that he would love to play Miles Morales. It's a character that he would love to play. He has admiration for the character, and he would be very much intrigued to do it. He also said by the time they make this movie, he'll probably be too old, probably be a college kid, so he doesn't quite think he'll be in it. He'll age out of it. So uh, he did such a phenomenal job in The Penguin, like a phenomenal job in The Penguin. I think everybody loved Victor, his character, on that show, and they would love to see more of him, more of him. And I think to see more of him, do, do the Miles Morales right now and get him in it. You don't rush it, obviously. I'm not saying that. So he probably would age out of it. But, you know, the thought that Miles Morales is there, and Hollywood is going to come for Miles Morales sooner or later, and it, you want it to be in the care of somebody who has admiration for this character and respect for the character. And right now, the directors of Don't Move, Adam Schindler and Brian Netto, Brian Netto especially, has great admiration for this character. He has a personal connection to Miles Morales, and that's what you want. Sam Raimi getting Spider-Man, like I said, 24, 25 years ago, he had a special connection to Spider-Man. He said he had Spider-Man bedsheets when he was a kid. This was his favorite character of all time, and he got a chance to bring that to the big screen. Now, this doesn't always play out that way. Maybe it was lightning in a bottle for Spider-Man, but that's not to say that it can't happen again with Brian Netto bringing Miles Morales to the big screen for a large audience. The audience that, you know, obviously loved this character in the Spider-Verse movies. They're very successful films. They're animated films. They're wonderful films. You can keep Miles Morales growing, and then you're not conflicting with Tom Holland, Spider-Man, or even Garfield or Maguire's if they come back in Secret Wars and whatnot. You don't conflict with that. You have your own Sony-verse Spider-Man, and it's Miles Morales. I don't think you can lose with that. I don't. I want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe, and until next time, May you be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Thwip, thwip, thwip!